Welcome everybody. In this video, I want to talk about JPEG quality. In all of the output modules where we're exporting JPEGs as part of our output, we have a quality setting. Now I'm here in the web module and notice that the quality setting follows the setting on setting the photo size in pixels. So the quality setting is completely independent of size in pixels. It does not affect how large your photo displays. It only affects the size of your photo in kilobytes and megabytes and how good the information is that's being displayed. Now the reason why we use the JPEG format in Lightroom and just generally is that it's very good at compressing our files and making them smaller in kilobytes without losing visual quality. Now let me just show you where this quality setting is in the other modules. So in the print module, in the print job panel, if I choose to print to JPEG rather than to my printer, I have the quality setting here. In the slideshow module, if I export to PDF, I have the quality setting. And then let me go ahead and go to the book module and show you that if you're outputting to blurb, you won't see a quality setting because that's being set behind the scenes for you. But if you're outputting to PDF or JPEG, then in fact, you're going to see this quality setting. So let's talk about how this works and how to make a decision on what quality to go with. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the library module. Now we're looking at a photo that I exported at 800 by 600 pixels. So we're seeing it full size here in the library module. Now this particular version of it, I exported at quality 100 and it looks perfectly good. It looks just like the original when I compare them at this final size. Now let me go ahead and zoom way in on this photo and talk about what compression does when you output to JPEG. So for each individual pixel in your photo, as that JPEG is being created, Lightroom looks at all of the sub pixels surrounding it to see if they're close enough in color and tone to that main one that's being evaluated that they can all be considered just one color and tone rather than nine different ones. Are they close enough? Now the lower your quality setting, the further out Lightroom will look to make larger areas all the same and the more compromises it will make on what close enough is. By changing a block of pixels from many different pieces of information on brightness and color all to the same brightness and color allows the JPEG to store much less data. It only needs to store one value for a whole chunk of pixels rather than 9 or 20 or however many. So that's how it reduces file size. Now let me go ahead and zoom back out here. So again, we're looking at this photo exported at quality 100. Let's look at it at quality 0. Now as I click on the quality 0, I want you to look up here at the sky as the photo changes. So now quality 0. So even before I zoom in, you should be able to see that the sky has started to break apart. There are chunks in here, the colors have become distorted, and it's become pixelated looking. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and look somewhere else in the photo here as I do quality 100 and then quality 0. Now it breaks apart first and most in smooth areas of the photo. That's where it finds the most values that are close enough for it to consolidate. So in a portrait, for example, you would see it break down in the skin tones faster than you would see it break down in hair or other detail in the photo. Now let's go ahead and select quality 0 and quality 100 together here. And I'm going to go to compare mode so that you can see them side by side. And I'll go ahead and zoom in to one to one so that you can see the difference. So this is quality 100. I'm going to type I for information because it gives me the file names here so we can tell them apart. So quality 100 versus quality zero, you can see the pixelation and the chunks of data. And now if I zoom in even further, they'll become very, very obvious to you. Now these, these little squares are just pixels in the photo because I've zoomed in so much. But this is JPEG compression gone way too far. 
So why would I do this? Well, I wouldn't. I would never save something at quality zero. I would never accept something this poor of a visual result. But let's take a look at quality 100 compared to quality 70. And I'll go ahead and I'll zoom in to one to one, which is the actual size of my exported 800 by 600 JPEG. And I'll look at the difference here. So quality 100, quality 70, it's looking really good to me. I'll go ahead and click and pan around and I'm not seeing any visual difference. So again, at the size that people are actually going to be viewing this photo, there's no visual deterioration when I go from 100 to 70. So I'm going to choose to go to 70. The reason is because I'm going to save a lot of file space. Let me go ahead and open Windows Explorer here to show you that the quality 100 JPEG is 505 kilobytes. Now when I reduced it to quality zero, I cut the file size down by more than six times. Huge decrease, but obviously at too great of a cost. But when I reduced the quality to 70, I still cut the file size by more than half. Now how much you save on file space at a particular quality setting is going to be photo specific. Photos with more fine detail, like these grasses, are not going to get reduced as much as photos that have a lot of smooth areas in them. Okay, so let me talk about how I actually use this. When I'm creating monitor-based output, which is fairly low resolution output compared to printing, I generally go with a quality setting around 70. That's because I've done enough tests to convince myself that at least for my photos and my individual ability to detect differences, 70 gives me a perfectly acceptable result. Now reducing the quality is particularly important if you're going to email your photos and are facing file size constraints, or if you're going to be uploading them to the web. Your photos on your website are going to load a lot more quickly at 200 kilobytes than they are at 500 kilobytes. So I strongly encourage you not to go with the JPEG quality of 100 when you're planning to put your photos on the web. There's no reason not to reduce the quality since there's no visual deterioration. Now, if I'm outputting to print, more fine detail can be seen in my photos, so I'm going to be more cautious. If I'm not facing any file size constraints, I'll keep the quality at 100. If I am facing file size constraints, I'll reduce it to 90, but after I create the output, I'll open up those JPEGs or that PDF and I'll take a look to make sure that I'm comfortable with the result. Make sure you zoom in to 100% or one-to-one -one or actual size to view the appropriate level of detail. Now, I would encourage you to experiment with the quality setting. Export or create your output with quality zero, with quality 50, with quality 70, with quality 90, with quality 100, and take a look at the results. You'll find your own settings that work for various applications. And once you find your comfort level with particular settings, you're going to be able to stick with them. You're not going to have to worry about evaluating every single photo that you output. Just be sure that you evaluate those settings with photos that both have a lot of fine detail and that don't. Now I just realized that with this comparison of quality 100 to quality 70, I didn't zoom in further on this. Now this is the level that I would want to evaluate my setting on, but just to show you that technically there is a difference between 100 and 70, let me go ahead and zoom in to maybe eight to one here and look at a smooth area here on the hood of the car. So at quality 100, as I look at this area here, I can see more gradation in color and tone. And here on the quality 70, I have more of a blob of color that's become distorted. So in smooth areas, I can see it if I zoom way in. But bottom line, no one's going to take this 800 by 600 pixel JPEG that displays just perfectly at actual size and zoom into 8 to 1 and evaluate the individual pixels. And even if they did, they wouldn't have the quality 100 file to compare it to. So this isn't a concern to me but I wanted you to see that technically there is still a difference. Okay, so this concludes the video on JPEG quality.